<clears throat> right, uh, so we're going to uh, just fit the oil filter. Uh, so a few things to note on the oil filter. First of all, these replacement uh, oil filters, they tend to have a smaller diameter hole in the end. So it's always advisable to open it out because when the oil is pumped in by the oil pump, the first thing it does is come through that hole and out through this uh, filter. So you need to make sure that everything's okay. And then from the filter, it goes to the rest of the engine. But the very first place it goes is through that hole, which is, and we can see it, yeah, down the end of the tunnel there, comes out of there. Right, uh, so I've, I've, I'm going to be enlarging that hole to make sure it's fine. Uh, then also there's, uh, on the cap, there's uh, this O-ring seal that sits in the base of the cap. I need to change that. They don't leak, but obviously don't want to encourage it. Uh, and then check the threads on the cap because uh, they can wear with you know, repeated oil changes. This one seems fine. Right, so I'm going to enlarge the hole on the end of this replacement oil filter and then we'll just uh, uh, insert it into the engine. Okay, so I've now enlarged that hole. I'm quite happy with that. So we now simply insert it down into the engine till it goes fully home. Then we get the spring, which goes over the end of the tank. Ignore the parts uh, catalogue. If you have a parts uh, catalogue for the T150, for some reason it shows this spring as going on the back end of the oil filter, which is very confusing. It doesn't. It goes where it looks like it should go, like in this hole and on the end of the tank. Uh, and then uh, we simply get the cap, put it over the spring, and then uh, screw it on. Got our new oil seal in place, O ring. Let's do that up. And there we go. And that's the, uh, that's the oil filter in. And obviously, I'm just going to get a socket on that now and just sign it up, and that's it. We're done. Right, uh, so here is the uh, uh, TACO drive and uh, I've dismantled it uh, simply by removing this small screw that holds the thing together um, and then the uh, this come the body which is uh, get the right way around which fits in there uh, then that comes out although it's very tight in this case it was pretty seized in and then there's the drive at the bottom and I've just cleaned it all up <clears throat> we're gonna oil it and then reassemble it the main thing is that there are two o-ring oil seals one that goes on the body there and one that was missing on our bike this is a small one that goes on the shaft so we put that small one down to the bottom of the shaft that goes it's got a groove there's no groove for that one and then we simply uh, reassemble it and lock it back with that grub screw well a locking sort of small locking screw and uh put it back on the bike okay so i've put some oil put the that little oil seal on there put a bit of oil on either end of the shaft and that simply slots down inside the body there we go and locates in the bottom there and then we're going to put this uh, sort of main lug on over the top with the oil, and that's got the oil seal near the top. And that's going to go down, and obviously this hole lines up with the hole for the uh, sort of locking nut that goes in there. But obviously that's going to be a tight fit, so I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to work that down uh, until those holes line up, and I'll put the locking there. Uh, locking that in and uh, there we are it's all back together now uh, all turning freely and <coughs> well sealed obviously it's all been oiled inside uh, and uh, well sealed on the actual aperture so I'm now simply going to that simply just uh, slots back in there it's bound to take a bit of um, wibbling there we go and then there's the three allen screws 
that will go in to hold it down and uh, that's in and there we are all done in place and we're sorted okay so uh, I'm just getting ready to adjust the tappet uh, clearances now um, and uh, to do that we need our feeler gauges and uh, there are two schools of thought as to the actual gap you use on a, on a trident some people say you need um, uh, six thou inlet clearance and eight thou exhaust clearance and some people say eight thou inlet and ten thou exhaust clearance um, I tend to use six and eight because I find it works okay on a road bike I think personally I think they recommend ten thou and eight thou if you really use the bike heavily and the bike gets red hot and so you need a bigger gap because the whole reason you need a gap in the first place is because the metal expands and so gaps close up and that's why you always have a bigger gap on the exhaust than the inlet because the exhaust gets hotter um, so i tend to find that six and eight thou uh, is the setting but you know i'm sure there's a lot of people will give you a big argument about that right so um, i've got my feeler gauges and um, so i've got six thou for the inlet and an eight thou feeler gauge um, I bend my feeler gauges up so that you can get them uh, under you know un underneath the valve uh, adjuster on top of the on top of the valve easily and what you're looking for is a quite a tight um, you know just just tight now the problem with these sorts of uh, tapper adjusters is that uh, when you get them nice and adjusted right then you've got to tighten the lock nut down and what invariably happens is as you tighten the lock nut down the actual adjuster moves with it and so the adjustment is wrong so you've got to try and hold that whilst tightening up the lock nut and it's a bit of a nightmare um, the only spanner i've ever found to fit these horrible square things is a six mil spanner okay don't ask me why um, and so often I will upgrade the tapper adjusters to mushroom headed adjusters um, because for the main reason they have an, an, Allen, uh, an Allen keyway built in the top. So a hex uh, head so that you can use uh, an Allen key instead of this horrible square thing at the top. And you can hold that tight whilst you tighten up. It's a lot easier with a hex key to then tighten up the lock nut without moving the actual adjuster um, but I didn't replace them on this bike because this bike has the later ball end tapper adjusters and they're they're pretty good they're relatively modern by sort of trident standards and so um, I left them as it was it, it just means that um, it's harder to adjust them when I say ball end I think I mentioned before in, in the tip of each adjuster is like a, a half uh, uh, exactly like a half circle so there's a circle and then the bottom end is flat and the flat end sits on the top of the valve but because it's ball ended it sits exactly flat on the top of the valve because it can move you know okay um, so I do that one what I'm going to do is I find a valve that's fully closed which like this one uh, put it on this is the inlet so I put it to six thou tighten it down so it's just quite a tight um, um, feel for the feeler gauge and then attempt to tighten the lock nut up uh, with my half inch spanner without moving the adjustment and then I'll go around and I'll do them all uh, rotating the engine like because this this one I think that is fully closed as well but this one obviously is fully down so you have to keep turning the engine to make sure the uh, valve is fully closed before you adjust it do the same with the exhaust <coughs> then I'll I'll go over the engine and I'll check them all again <clears throat> once I've finished because it's amazing how things change. <clears throat> but bear in mind that, that because I'm using a composite gasket, one of the weaknesses of a composite gasket is that you have to um, torque the engine down. <clears throat> oh dear me, torque the cylinder head down uh, almost immediately after starting because everything loosens up. And that means we'll also... <clears throat> oh dear, I can't get rid of this thing as I'm gone. Um, it means you'll I'll also have to readjust the tappets fairly soon after starting anyway. 
So I'm not too worried because they're all going to be rechecked and readjusted anyway. All right, I'll get on with this and see how we do. There we go. All the uh, tablets are set now. Uh, having these um, sort of bent feeder gauges are really very sort of kind of important. Uh, let's see if I can get that under, under there. Uh, because what I, uh, you know, I, I had kind of forgotten. I don't know if that's open. I can't get it under. But what I have forgotten is that with like a flat feeder gauge, it rests on the, you know, on the actual rocker box and then sort of bends up and it gives you a, it tends to give you a false reading because you're sort of reading, basically you're reading at an angle like that. Whereas if you get that um, tip in, then you actually get a, a, a correct reading. I just really noticed it this time that I, I, I didn't bend the end up too much and I was taking a measurement about there this time. And then when I took the feeder gauge out, there was a huge amount of play. And then I realised that I was getting a false reading by by having the, the gauge like light because it lies on the actually on the edge of the the base of the rocker box. So if you can, you know, bend them up and then you just get the tip in and you get a uh, and, it, and the tip's not resting on anything and then you get an accurate reading. Anyway, uh, they're all done. So what I'll do now is I'll put some well seal on, of course, and then put the inspection caps on again. Like the actual rockers themselves, they're marked in let and exhaust. Um, I think you can put them on upside down if you really tried. I'm not sure, but uh, let's have a look. What's this? The uh, inlet. So uh, I'll go on that way. Uh, can they go upside down? Uh, no, I don't think they can. So <laughs> they can only go one way, so you can't get it wrong. Uh, and then they'll go on like that. And what I'll do is I'll put well seal on. When I say put well seal on, I'm only, only going to put well seal on the. Uh, what should I do? I think I'll just put it on the actual rocker box uh, and put the gasket on there. But I won't put well seal on the uh, actual inspection uh, covers because I know, as I said before, we'll be taking them off fairly soon after the engine started to recheck all the all the the uh, gaps. So um, uh, all the valve clearances, that's what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm not going to weld then. Perhaps then we'll add the weld seal if necessary to these once we've adjusted the, readjusted the valve clearances when the engine started. Okay, I'll get the, uh, I'll get these covers on. And there we are, the rocker covers are on. Uh, all okay uh, pretty straightforward uh, only thing to note is the, uh, the center two uh, uh, bolts are uh, they're not supported so you don't over tighten those because you will crack the the cover the two uh, outer ones they're both helicoiled so they're strong and uh, they do uh, the cover you know goes on to the to the rocker boxes so it is supported so you can tighten the two outer ones down pretty tight but don't over tighten the two center ones uh, so uh, it's time to get on uh, with the gearbox I just thought we do those few little bits whilst wait I've been waiting for a couple of parts for the gearbox so I thought we get those bits out of the way uh, now so there we go another step forwards